formal outfit. Ken is wearing. You're right, that was exactly my intention. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests, this was the formal attire I wore at a recent Costco Ball formal ball. We had the choice to either wear a costume in the spirit of the British are coming, or something formal, black tie, and a mask. So this was my outfit, plus my mask, which I'll put on here, that I wore at this event, which other people wore, for the most part, outfits resembling the Beatles. Uh, we had John Lennon, we had George Harrison, we had the usual crew. We had some Ozzy Osbournes, some Mick Jagger types, and then there were the formally dressed ones. At this ball, there was a great band. The kind of band that just made you want to dance, and that's for me. I was out there dancing, doing my stuff, and sure enough, on the side, I could see the people who couldn't dance with their drinks, you know, mainly guys, <coughs> on the side, behind a beer, thinking, I wish I could dance. But not me, I was out there because I knew I could dance. I was in my, in my element, and I having a great time with all the kings and queens of England and Mick Jaggers and guys with big puffy stuff and other people like me in nice suits. At one point in the evening, I found myself dancing with a doll. You know, long pigtails, some blue and white dress, makeup. She was kind of cute. I think she was cute, you know, it's a custom board. You can never tell what, what you're uh, dancing with. But I was dancing with her. <laughs> and at one point I looked up and I saw in her eyes that thrill and excitement and an expression that said, wow, I never expected a dance like this. I felt a champ of the dance floor. You know that feeling where you feel like you're the champ? Well, what a difference a day made. Just the day before, I was at a karaoke bar. For me, a karaoke bar is a nightmare, because I can't sing. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, he just says that. Let me tell you, family, friends, even lovers, when they hear me sing, say, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and when I think they're joking, and I go, <laughs> they say, I mean it. Stop! <laughs> Pat, have you ever heard that? I don't think so. So there I was at a karaoke bar with my friends. We were having a good time, but I should say they're having a good time. They're on the stage. I, one friend, uh, Brian in particular, a tall, bald guy, kind of shy, doing his Elvis Presley. You know, he's doing the whole thing, and the groupies are all around. And where am I? I'm on the side with a glass of beer, looking out there thinking, I'm a loser. Chump. Chump. Champ. You know that feeling? Champ to chump, chump to champ. One day you're up, one day you're down. You're having a good day, you're having a bad day. It's not yin and yang, let me tell you. <laughs> I ask myself, Ken, there's got to be, be a better way to enjoy life. And perhaps the answer was in some words of advice given to me by a famous scientist. C.L. Tien was a combustion scientist like myself. Yes, I burn things, that's my science. He was very accomplished, so accomplished, he went on to become chancellor of the University of California at Berkeley. He's about his height, older man, quite distinguished. We were at a meeting together, and we got to talking about science and politics, you know. And he said, Ken, let me tell you, in science, it's best to work at the extreme. Either very hot, as I do with combustion, very cold, cryogenic. Very high, like planetary science, very low, oceanography. Very large, like rockets. Very small, like nanotechnology. But in politics, he said, it's best to work at the center. 
And I thought, well, maybe that's advice for my life. Live at the center, balanced, grounded, observant. Have you ever felt that way? Up, down, back, forth? Maybe you should be at the center. So the next time you find yourself champ of the dance floor and you're going and then the next day, chump with your beer, saying, I wish I could do that. Perhaps you should join me. Balanced, grounded, at the center.